I usually do embroidery on typical fabrics like cotton or linen or felt, but you can also embroider on some unusual fabrics like cork. This is some cork fabric that I bought while on vacation in Portugal, but you can also buy it through a lot of different fabric stores and online shops. Cork fabric is a thin layer of cork, which is made from the bark of the cork tree, and it's laminated to a fabric backing. So you can get a sense here that um, it's very soft and flexible. This piece is the color of natural cork, but you can also buy dyed corks in a variety of colors. Cork fabric is often made into purses, wallets, and other sewn products like these. So you can see that it takes stitching well, it can be cut out because it doesn't fray very much. And here you're seeing natural cork and then that red beyond is one example of dyed cork. And it might be called cork fabric or cork leather. Both terms mean the same thing and they both come from a tree rather than an animal. Here's an example of a finished embroidery on cork. This has a good bit of detail and a variety of stitches that were done in one or two strands. And you can see that the cork fabric takes embroidery really well. It's really flexible, so my stitches are not moving or getting deformed because the cork doesn't stretch really. It's nice and thick. And you can also hopefully see that cork is pretty forgiving. I stabbed this piece all over while missing my spot while trying to stitch like I usually do. And those little holes either healed up on their own or were just less noticeable than the overall natural pattern within the cork. So if you wanna try embroidering on cork, here are some tips. The first one is I really recommend that you do some test stitches on a scrap of your specific fabric because it may not be exactly the same as the one that I'm working on. Here you can see this is the exact same cork. I had cut a corner off of it and I did a variety of thick and thin stitches, knots bunched together or alone, and I also stabbed this all over to make a grid of holes just to see how healing and durable, and you can see even where there's a lot of quite thick knots, there's no cracking or anything in the cork. For me, it was very, very stable. But try to do some testing first to put your mind at ease. Because I work in detailed projects, I'm always either tracing something or printing onto water-soluble fabric. Um, and so if you do either of those methods, the cork that I've worked with has worked great with a water-soluble marker or with the water-soluble dissolving stabilizer. Both washed away easily with no problems, but you might wanna test that as well. One thing you'll notice working on cork is that it's just thicker by a good bit than the fabric you might be used to, so it's harder to push through. So if you're like me and you push your needle through with the same spot on your fingers all the time, you might wanna use either a hard thimble, a leather thimble, or any one of these little finger patches that basically form a temporary adhesive thimble on the point of your finger that you use while you're stitching to just protect your finger as you're poking through the cork. And because cork is thick, it doesn't fit well into a regular embroidery hoop. For me, at least it felt like torturing it to try to get it in there. And so it works great with something like a Q-snap or another kind of frame. So if you haven't seen one before, this is just a regular Q-snap. This is an eight by eight in my hand, um, but it has this very gentle curve. So you would just put your fabric over it and then the clamp will hold it in place nicely. And you would clamp each side in this case. The gentle curve that you get with this kind of frame compared to the really tight bend that you get in a hoop works great for thick things like cork, felt, and other thick fabrics. And that's it. Thanks for watching.